Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marc Andre Pelletier. I'm the president and CEO of Bantera Resources. Bantera is a Canadian gold junior exploration company with uh, uh, a large portfolio of uh, mining exploration asset and infrastructures. We're located in the IBTB Greenstone Belt in the north of Quebec, a great place to be. And I'm talking to you, Matthew, today from Colorado, Beaver Creek. Fantastic. Well, that's why your introduction was so eloquent. You must have said that quite a few times over the past few days, I suspect. <laughs> I think I actually dream about it. <laughs> <laughs> so how many meetings did you get set up there? I just got it before the talk today and uh, I stop at 40 and uh, that's uh, that's 40 formal meetings but of course you know with the social aspect of uh, the summit uh, we had more much more informal meetings as well yeah okay no, no they, they, these are these are tough actually. it sounds like a jolly but it's not i assure you it's, it's three hard, hard days but look uh, marc andre i want to talk to you okay you have built Five mines? Is it five mines? Uh, a little bit over now. Bit over. Okay, okay. So you know how to build a mine, and this is this is this is why I have um, I want to I, I want to talk to you because you've walked into a difficult situation. There's a bit of history with Bonterra. Okay, remind people what you walked into. Remind people of the new strategy, please, because I want to get into how that is being received by investors. So if you, if you don't mind. The, the, the strategy, Matthew, is very simple. Uh, we want to grow the business and, and to the point that we're going to be uh, going back to production. So we want to become the next gold junior producer. And, and uh, so it's uh, having to say that is how do we do that? And we really want to develop our assets to the next stage. And, and when I joined the company um, earlier this year, I took the time, you know, to look at uh, our deposits, our infrastructures, and and Bonter has great deposits with two huge deposits containing near three million ounces of gold. We have a mill, and and really the the, the strategy is what do we do next? And uh, I concluded uh, that the best the best way to bring the the company as back as a gold producer is to advance. The Barry deposit, and uh, it is an open pit and underground portion of the deposit. And we recently published a PEA uh, on the Barry open pit. Okay, but the, what, what you walked into was a slightly different situation from that. It was a kind of a long time in the making, and nothing really kind of got over the line. I think people, and what I want to get, you know, um, I want to understand today from you is how. The open pit plan, I get into production via the open pit plan because it is, we're talking about a short life of my life, like five years and 30,000 hours. It's, it's not big, but it gets some cash flowing, but it's not a very Canadian model. So is the market ready for that? Have you been getting positive feedback or are people still confused as to why you would do it that way? Uh, the feedback is fairly good. I mean, uh, we, in order to to become a mining company, we 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 have to stop diluting our stock. If if you look at my past experience at Westdom, from 2017 to 2022 when I left, we were able to grow the business organically, without going to 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 the market, and and, and we I think the market did recognize that, and and that's basically what we're trying to do at Bonterra. Of course, it's a smaller scale project, but that's what we have, you know, immediately. So that, 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 that's what we're working on. So we have a mining lease at Barry. We have process that are at the mill in the past. So all indicators, you know, will move toward the Barry open pit. But that in itself is not going to be enough. You need to go underground as well. Um, so, you know, <laughs> I'm just intrigued about how you piece it. Look, you built five mines. You, you know, it's not too many people who tell you what to do in terms of building a mine, but you've got to believe that you can get that over the line, whatever the stepping stones, mm -hmm. right? So open pit, that's still going to need financing. So what are you doing about that? Yeah, so uh, actually we needed the PEA that we published in June to, to be able to talk to investors, bankers, and, you know, have something very concrete to, to tell them. So the initial capex, uh, as per the PA, is 22 million. Uh, we know we're, go we're going to need, and it's all Canadian, Matthew, uh, 
we know we're going to need some working capital because uh, at the start of the pit, the stripping ratio is going to be pretty high, waste waste to all. So so we we would like to begin the the production, the construction work, and the production uh, the battery pit with uh, about forty million Canadian. So we've been uh, working on that since we published the PEA. Uh, we're trying to get the best deal, you know, for the company considering the current market conditions, of course. Well, there you go. There's the big long pole in the tent, um, which is the current market conditions and price of gold. And we're seeing CapEx structures across the globe being blown out of the water. You were doing it off the back of a PEA. So explain to people perhaps new to your story or just more broadly, how do you get something financed off the back of a PEA, which isn't going to dilute the heck out of the company? What's, what type of financing the, have you been looking at or exploring? We're looking for a mix, a mix of uh, equity, a debt, and a, a convert. So uh, this, uh, you know, uh, this week at the Beaver Creek, the, we talked to many people. And, uh, and I would say, uh, you know, the quite, quite a few people are interested to, to go with a mix, that kind of mix of, of financing. Right, okay. But and is there, sorry, there NSRs over this property, over Barry? There are. It's uh, actually, uh, yeah. oh, there's okay. uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, of the NSR, actually, we can buy them back. There's a, uh, a uh, royalty from a Sandstorm at 3.9%, and it could be 2.1% can be uh, buy back by uh, uh, for two million US. Those those uh, buy back, Matthew, we're actually considering the PA. So there's uh, we're actually working on other possible uh, NSR reduction deal at the moment, and hopefully those deal will conclude before we release the PFS uh, on the on the very open pit before the end of the year. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you're still on target for the PFS by the end of the year. It's yeah? a challenge. I'm telling you, Matthew. Uh, work with consultants is very challenging, but uh, that's why we know the project the best. So we need to to stay involved, you know, in the process and make sure we uh, remain on track. So, so yes, as, as it is, yes. Right. So this, the okay, we're, you're also talking about an updated um, main, main resource, right? And the PFS by the end of the year. Is, are you going to be able to get that funded off the back of a PFS and an, an updated resource? Because you've been doing a lot of infill drilling. It, it, well, sorry, lots of questions here. Is the infill drilling that you've been doing feeding into the new up, updated um, um, resource? Yes. We're, we've done a very small campaign. And what we're trying to do is to close the edge of the pits, you know, make sure we don't leave anything behind. On, on, I'm giving you an example. On the west side of the pit, there were two small satellite pits. So, so we tried to to join them together or join them to the main pit. So we've done some infill joining just to make sure we're not going to leave anything behind. I, I do not expect a lot of changes, you know, from the past MRE. But again, the PFS process is uh, is our tool that we're using to de-risk the project as much as possible on many aspects, and geology is one of them. You built mines. I keep coming back to it because it's a big deal. Because not many, not many companies make discoveries. Not many companies get through an economic phase and work and, and see an economic project in front of. Them. Not many companies get into production. You've done it five times. So I'd like, um, I got to reference that. But what about the financiers? Because as a banker, you kind of want as much certainty as possible in times like this to ensure that this project is not going to fall over. So you've built stuff before. You're confident off the back of PFS that it's going to de-risk it. Do you feel, or do your financiers, will they require further economic studies from you? I don't think so, honestly. Um, uh, and, and why is that? It, it's very simple. We have a pit. There's been some past production there. We have the mill. We have the tailings management era. It's not the project we're starting, you know, from the green field and from... from from the start to the end, we are we already you know uh, quite a bit down the road, and and I'm just going to give you some example, and I, and I have a lot of them, but if if I'm telling you that this week Bonterra is going for a tender or offer to select the contractor who's going to mine the pit, who's going to build uh, the the tailings management area. This is how we are. This is what I call de-risking. 
We were going to select the contractor in October. That, that contractor is going to become our partner of choice. He's going to participate in the PFS because contractors have sometimes better way to do things. Uh, the cost involved are going to be the cost used in the PFS. So ideally, we have a contract signed. So you know, you know these days with so many projects, they got surprises on cost. We're trying to mitigate that aspect of the business. There's going to be surprises. That there are always surprises, but you know we we work on what we can uh, now and trying to reduce the risk as much as possible. So so that's what we're doing now. Another example: at the end of September, we're going to have the construction drawing done for the for the phase one of the tailings management area expansion. We're already at that stage, so. You know, so we're, we're trying, we're a small team. We're trying to do as much as we can, but that's the direction we're, we're going for. Can, can I say, if you're about to select someone in October that, that you're going to work with, you, you must be having conversations with lots of people at the moment to try and, try and understand, that, you know, who's right, the best fit for you, etc. What is the feedback that you're getting in the market with regards to um, costs? Because we've seen inflation costs, we've seen price gouging, where people are taking advantage of the situation, taking advantage of the fact that there's um, there's not a lot of spare capacity out there in terms of people and drills and, you know, consultants, etc. So is the feedback that the, the expectation is the prices will start to come down or they will continue to rise? Or what, what, what's your expectation? I at least stay as is, to be honest. I, if, if, if they don't rise, uh, they're going to stay as is, I would think. What's interesting about our project, I mean, again, look at the tailings management area expansion. It, it's in the PA, it's $20 million. So when you look at the scope of work, we're not building anything. There's no steel, you know, uh, sheldings. That's, we're not building anything. We're going to move rock and we're going to pad it into dams and you know, and we're going to do lifts. So we have labor cost, we have uh, equipment cost, and fuel cost. So yeah, we, we could be exp exposed to higher fuel cost, but that, that's why we're going to, uh, to to select the contractor. You know, if we can lock the labor and equipment cost, I mean, again, you mitigate the the, the impact on potential higher costs on supplies. But what I'm trying to tell you is in, the, in our project, there's no steel. There's not a lot of concrete. We're, we're drilling blasting rock. We're moving it to a mill. And uh, we're building a TMA. So I think for that aspect, anyway, I'm quite quite comfortable. You know? And don't forget, in those PAs, there's always contingency. So you always have a little bit of room. But that's why we need to optimize as much as we can uh, you know, uh, to be prepared just in case you know some something blows up or and uh, and, and that's that's typical you know to, to mining and, and construction. Yeah. Okay. So efficiency, efficient use of capital is really, really important to you, and you don't have some of those kind of big factors like you know concrete or steel, which makes sort of drive prices up. Um, but what's happening with things like like uh, like fuel or reagents and, and and so forth? Is is that Staying pretty much the same at the moment. Since we've done the PA, the, the, I believe the fuel price have been going down a bit. So uh, about the regions, uh, to be honest, I, I do not know. So it's something that we uh, we should look at that uh, as part of the PFS. Okay. And is there anything that since we've last spoke, is there anything that you've dropped in terms of like managing cash flow? Is there anything that you've dropped? I mean, have are, are you spending money on trying to get? You know, you talked about the eight hundred ton per day mill um, and spanning to eighteen hundred mm -hmm. ton per day. You're going after the mm -hmm. permit there. So has that, are things like that slowed down, yes. or in you know, what's given? What's, yeah, what, what's stopped? I, honestly, uh, Matthew, I had to to make a very hard decision uh, not too long ago. Uh, like you mentioned, I am a mine opener. I'm not a mine closure. Uh, but unfortunately, we, we made the decision to close, to put the bachelor underground mine 
under permanent care and maintenance. And, and the, the last production at the mine was in 2018. So it's been four years. Uh, Bonterra was kept, kept the mine, you know, under dewater, well-maintained, and, and, and that cost a lot of money. Uh, we believe we're going to save about $3 million a year uh, by putting that mine on, on care of maintenance. It breaks my heart, but it's the right thing to do for the company. We're going to reallocate that money in the development of our project. Baggy Underground is, uh, is the next project following the Baggy Open Pit. Right. Okay. Okay. So, but, but so that was like I think the you know the the M and I in that was only about one hundred sixty thousand ounces, but it was you know reasonable grade if I, over five and a half gram, uh, five and a half um, uh, grams per ton. But, but what what because you just didn't have enough data, or you didn't have the the cash to be able to sort of see what you know see if you could grow that. I mean, when you say it's a hard to see, what, what were the factors? I'm sort of intrigued for the bachelor underground mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a small resource there at 265,000 ounces. Most most of the resource all, all is categories. in the Moroi yeah. deposit, which is just side the, beside the Bachelor Mine. Uh, you're right about the grade. Uh, Bontara took a bulk sample in 2020 in the Moroi deposit. And, and I understand the, rec the reconciliation of the, the bulk sample turned out to be positive. But the grade mine was 3.9 grams per ton. So the 5.5 grams per ton you're talking about is non-diluted. As you know, when we mine, sometimes we get some extra material. And, and, and uh, that's one of our concern we had with the Mori deposit. If we could potentially get higher dilu dilution than expected. And, and, and when that happened, you know, your cost goes up. Your grade goes down, and and you're putting your project and for such a comp small company like Bonterra, you're putting the company at risk. So, for a risk perspective, it is uh, you know the right thing to do. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm glad you explained that because I think not a lot of people understand the kind of dil dilution component or you know what true width. Uh, what's mean? Yeah, there's a lot of variables that actually define the economics, and it's you know it's important for people to understand that. And so, so, the cost mm -hmm. to maintain the mine for the next five years, because it would take five years to to you know to get to the point we could eventually mine. So you got to consider the cost that you're putting every day to to keep that mine, and and that was the trigger, to be honest. Absolutely. Okay. And is there, is there anything else that in terms of in terms of just because you've come in to kind of fix the problem, right? And you come up with a new strategy, kind of get into cash flow, stop the you know financial dilution uh, to, to to shareholders, um, and you've had to look at all the moving parts. So, are there any other elements that you've you know been able to save money at, or are kind of conscious that perhaps could be run more efficiently, so that you can focus on Barry? We have slowed down the exploration at the Gladiator. We we did what we wanted to do this summer with two drills on the lake. Uh, barge drilling, we completed that program uh, not too long ago, and and we want to take a pause there to, to make sure we gather all the uh, you know the data. Uh, we uh, we want to look at the interpretation. Uh, we have our own resource model geologist now, which is a great great uh, great expertise. Uh, you know, to build in, in internally. So we, we're going to take the time, you know, to do it right. Uh, look at the uh, interpretation, the geology, and we're going to put the more focused exploration program for next year. So so that's kind of where where we are now at Gladiator. So we're kind of wrapping up the year, you know, and, and set the table for next year. So, so for cost perspective, uh, yes, it's it, it's going to be uh, so there's going to be some saving there as we we are not training at Gladiator at the moment. Perfect. Okay, I understand. It's, you're streamlining the process. So, um, but the but strategy for batch are well understood. The kind of um, more uh, data driven decision making kind of slows things down a little bit at Gladiator, but you will be back there. So Barry Open Pit. Um, what what's What's the timing on that? What, how, how do you quickly move that into a state where it may get nearer production? Uh, we're talking about mid-year next year to get back in the, 
in production. As I mentioned, a very high stripping ratio at the start. So the first three months, there's more ways to, to ore to move. Let's say, let's say that. And uh, we should be back in your uh, later in Q4 next year. So really 2024 would be the, the first full year of production for the pit. And, uh, you know, we, we, we're going to be at the 1,200 tons per day uh, stage uh, for about 30,000 ounces a year. Right. And so and have you got the permit for the underground ramp yet? For the underground, uh, we actually have two diamond drills on the deposit. We uh, started two months ago as a 125,000 meters drill program. That's going to take about a year and a half. We're going to do about 40 this year and uh, 80 80 ish next year so that program is well underway uh, we would like to publish a new mineral resource estimate on the underground portion of the deposit end of next year i would like to remind you matthew if when you look at the buried deposit the open pit is only 10 percent of the deposit 90 percent of the deposit is below 100 meter the baggy deposit contains over 2,000 ounces per vertical meter. It's actually higher than the gladiator deposit, which is at 1,300. So when you get to that 1,000 ounces per meter, now you, you start talking about mining. So it's really good to be above that, that level. Right. And, and what, what, do you know anything? Like you obviously did an assessment on, on the Bachelor Mill and Bachelor Maroy uh, projects that will actually, the dilution component will you know, make it very, very difficult. With Barry, you sound like you have a, a, deg a degree of confidence about what the, what the mineable grade will be. Yeah, we, we're looking at the mining method at the moment, and that, that is the key. It's very basic in mining. You, you have to have the right mining method for the ore body that you're gonna mine. And, and if you don't, you could be in trouble. So when you look at the geology at the Barry, uh, you have those vertical lenses, 800 series, 1,000, they have names. But those can be mine, bulk mining, what we call long gold mining, which is much, much easier. You know, it's sub-vertical sub ore, a bit thicker, easier to mine. But a good portion of the deposit is actually uh, what they call those shallow dippers uh, veins, the H series. And uh, those are narrow vein, high grade. So... We talked about dilution earlier. So dilution control is a key for those H series. We, we know that already. We were working on, uh, 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 the, you know, to make sure we're going to select the right mining method for those uh, high grade narrow vein. And it appears that the cotton field mining method, which is a very selective method, usually higher cost, but you're going to get the best of your body. So that's that's what we're working on. It's early days, but you know, it's it's the time to look at those those things. It would basically, you know, it's it's very basic engineering that we'll carry on over uh, the next year and a half. Okay. And will we start to see some kind of, some more guidance from you um in Q1, or will given given that you're sort of shaking things up here a bit, will you kind of kind of consolidate your thinking and, and refine strategy and sort of share with the market um, in in I guess in one statement or one document what the plan is? I think the next time we're going to talk, Matthew, it's probably going to be early December when we're going to publish the PFS, and and I think the PFS will will demonstrate the economical potential at the very open pit. Uh, so, so much uh, uh, potential in a higher gold price environment, uh, you know, and, and I, I know the gold price is, it is what it is now, but, you know, what's the chance in the next uh, two, five years that the price of gold uh, goes above 1700 US? We all know it, it's coming. We just don't know when. So hopefully we're going to benefit of that positive gold price environment and generate more cash flow and uh, and I continue to advance our projects. Okay, so what do you, what would you say? I'll leave you the final word. Okay, what would you say to current shareholders who have, you know, been party to the previous previous managed strategy, which didn't didn't come off? You've been brought in to change things around. H how much more time do you need for them to kind of see some upside 
And, you know, will this thing actually get over the line? What would you say to them? Mm -hmm. we, we put together a very detailed timeline. It's actually in our, on our corporate presentation. And, and uh, of course, we keep fine tuning it and, you know, uh, putting in a bit more details. But uh, we have a very clear plan. Uh, we are in the executing mode. Uh, the PFS coming. Uh, financing, we're working on that. Uh, the permitting would be the trigger, and and again we we're working on that. So I think I think our shoulders we see that we're we're moving toward the right direction, and and we are uh, doing what we say we're gonna uh, we're doing what we say we're gonna do. So I think I think we're gonna get some credibility on that aspect over the next months. Okay. Well, look, um, I will we'll wait to sort of see assays, ask more assays if they uh, if they come through, if there are any outstanding assays, see if they come through. But I think the, the thing that I, I guess, actually, do you mind one more question? <laughs> one more question, which is in your experience, when you built mines previously, I, you know, I don't know what kind of the variety of scale they were at, but what were the kind of moments where the market typically reacts? What were the things that you delivered during that mind build phase that you've outlined, I think on page eight of your PowerPoint, um, that you're going to deliver, which have had a reaction in the past. Is it simply just the MRE? So the updated resource, the PFS, the, you know, some, some decision around financing or were there more subtle moments? I think, yeah, good question. If, if you want my opinion, it's, it's when we begin, when we're going to start to pour gold. And and it's not just to pull one bar and then uh, wait for the next. It it it's 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 the it, to do it on an ongoing basis. So so that's what we're aiming for, uh, Matthew. And we have a clear path uh, to to get there. So I'm very confident that we uh, we're going to be very successful.